There's a particular interest in Romero here in this church and we have a shrine which contains a relic, two relics in fact of Romero and one of Rutilio Grandi. And for a long time we felt post-Covid and so forth that we would like to get something going and we were delighted this evening to be able to find uh, Father Martin Meyer, a German Jesuit with extensive experience of El Salvador to come and deliver the Romero lecture this evening. It was uh, Oscar Romero, Archbishop Romero, now Saint Oscar Romero, uh, who brought me to El Salvador in the sense I didn't know him personally, but uh, I was so impressed by his uh, assassination, by his martyrdom and by his testimony that I wa wanted to know the country uh, and the church of Romero. And I went to El Salvador for the first time in 1989. Uh, and I became a parish priest in El Salvador, in a countryside parish, under difficult circumstances. My predecessor was uh, assassinated. He was among the six Jesuits uh, killed by arm, army soldiers of uh, the Salvadorian army in 1989. So uh, I became uh, uh, the pastor of this parish in Jayaque, and. Uh, uh, El Salvador is a wonderful country. I thought the, the lecture was excellent, Father Martin. It was really fantastic. I think you got to the, to the core of, uh, of Oscar Romero. And, uh, um, you know, he's an inspiring character. That's the thing, he's an inspiring character. He was someone who changed direction in his life um, when he realised you know, he was going the wrong direction. Um, but that takes humility. Uh, he was a courageous man because you know, he had seen his friend and other people have been killed. So he kind of knew what was in store for him. Um, uh, so that, that's really, really inspiring, you know? Um, and um, it is, it's, you know, he's a genuine concern for other people and for the poor. And when he saw injustice, he was prepared to speak out about it, put his head above the parapet and accept the consequences. Well, I knew uh, Archbishop Romero. Um, I worked with him in, in the time he was Archbishop from 1977 to 1980. We became friends and I went out from London many times to, uh, to collect information about the human rights violations, take it to Amnesty International and to Justice and Peace in, in different parts of Europe. And then when he was under attack, uh, we organised the Nobel Peace Prize nomination by the British Parliament, which was uh, members of the House of Commons, House of Lords, Scots, uh, as well as um, uh, English and Welsh people. Uh, we had a delegation I, I led out to, I was a secretary for a delegation that went to El Salvador to support Romero at a very hard time and it included three MPs, one of whom was Dennis Canavan from Scotland who I think is a, a socialist or something or other in the Scottish Parliament. In those days he was a, 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 a sort of centre-left uh, Labour man. But uh, uh, yes, so, so I, I was involved in a lot with Romero. Um, I was at his funeral and saw the kind of horrible things when 40 people were killed. And then since then, I, uh, uh, I've been involved in the processes that have gone on towards his canonization, which took, uh, which took what, um, 20, 30, uh, 38 years. Uh, but that, that, that's fine. It worked out right in the end. And although it took a long time, and uh, our speaker this evening said we waited uh, impatiently, in fact, when you look back in history, 38 years is not a long time for canonization. I've come down from Aberdeen because just with the recognition that Ramirez is such an important point of reference for the church today, and I want to I want to learn more about him, and I want to you know show solidarity with the kind of vision that he has and how he's looking for us to move forward in the church. If that makes sense. I think it was a great lecture. Um, we're really deeply indebted to Martin Meyer for giving us really both the life of Romero, but also really unfolding some of the background to his, what some people call his conversion, the way in which he changed really quite radically. It's great that Justice and Peace are here tonight to support this event, particularly because it's about Oscar Romero, um, who was obviously inspirational to us all. Um, and the work that he done with the poor and uplifting the poor and being a voice for the poor. So that is particularly part of our mission as Justice and Peace. Um, and in particular, obviously, we are very committed to ending nuclear weapons and the expense that they cause our, our economy. We spend 
trillions and billions of pounds on these worldwide when we have you know, so many poor that could be benefiting from that finance instead of it going towards war and building nuclear weapons, more and more powerful nuclear weapons that are going to destroy our world. Why should we not use that finance and that funding to help the poor and to make this world a peaceful and better place for everyone? So St Oscar Romero was one of our two patrons, the other being St Margaret. Um, but as his concern for the poor is really important because that's what SCIAF is all about. It's about injustice and it's about making the world better for the poor in some of the very poorest parts of the world. So, big link. So, thanks to the people who worked with us to put this together, such as SCIAF, uh, Pax Christi Scotland, Sancta Familia, of course, uh, the Archbishop Romero Trust, and us here at the Edinburgh Jesuit Centre, we have been able to do this this evening and now we're having some nice sandwiches and a nice glass of wine to celebrate a splendid event. We want to make it an annual event um, and really just to invite people to come along and to reflect on what it means to be a listening church and also a prophetic church that actually stands up for you know, the most marginalised in society.